Amen, brothers. Hallelujah. Good to have young men in the house, ain't it? Yes. The Bible says it calls the young men because they're strong. So we thank the Father for young men that are strong. Can everybody see the screen a little bit better now? I'm going to call myself a little Can y'all see it over there? Yes. All right. All right. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of what? Yeah. How can they hear without a what? Preaching. And how can he preach except he's been what? Sin. So we have to understand what the word is saying and what it's teaching us so that we can begin to understand. Uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 4 says, Hear, O Israel, our Yah, our Yah is how many? One. Everybody shout one. One. Uh, so we have to shema today. We yes. have to hear what the Most High is speaking, what the Most High is declaring, and what the Most High is telling us today. And uh, we thank the Father. Uh, so today we're going to deal with deliverance. Everybody shout deliverance. Deliverance. We're going to talk about what is deliverance and how you receive it. Because it's very important that we understand that Yeshua came for a reason. And he taught certain things for a certain reason. And he wants you to understand and know so that you can be well equipped with understanding what it is that his ministry was. And uh, one of the things that he preached was he preached deliverance. He preached de deliverance to the captives. See, there's a reason why the world is in the shape that it's in. I want everybody paying attention up here now. Mm -hmm. Folks put all those gadgets and all that stuff away so that everybody can focus in on what thus says Yah. See, you didn't come here just to, you know, uh, be entertained. We didn't come here to be entertained, and I didn't come to entertain you. But I came to actually give you a word that's going to change your life. Yeah. <clears throat> but if you don't receive this word as a word that's going to change your life, then you will, you will uh, uh, miss this moment, and you'll miss this visitation that the Most High is trying to come visit you. You will miss the opportunity, you will miss the moment, and you'll, cause your, you, you'll, you'll be here, your body will be here, but your mind will be gone. Y'all hear that? Yes. <clears throat> See, I used to deal with children all the time. I was a teacher for 15 years in the school system. And I used to say that all the time. I said, I know y'all bodies are here, but I know your mind is at home. Yeah. I said, what TV you got on in your mind? Yeah. Turn all the TVs off in your mind. Yeah. And I want to be the only TV you look at that right now. And I could see the children turn off the TVs in their mind <laughs> and focusing in on what I was saying. Because Satan's job is to get you to be unfocused. His job is to get you to come to a place like this and not hear anything, which means you will leave the same way you came in. Right. And you would have spent all this time having an opportunity to hear something that would change your life, but instead of it changing your life, you'll go out and not know what was said, how it can help you, how it can benefit your life whatsoever at all. Because you came in here unfocused with your mind. Your mind really wasn't here. Your body was here, but your mind wasn't here. So I have to draw you in so that you can be drawn into the Word. See, so this is what Yahweh does. He woos us or draws us by His Spirit so that we can all be on one accord so that we can hear what thus says Yah. What is he declaring? What is he speaking? And what is it that I don't know? What is it that he, uh, Satan has hid? Because the Bible teaches us over and over again that Satan deceived the whole, the whole world. But he just didn't deceive you. He deceived the whole world except all you. Of us. All of us. See, that's what people believe. They believe that he deceived everybody, yes. but the Satan can't pull no wool over my eyes. And you deceive by your own mind. Mm -hmm. See, we, ain't, we, we have to understand that our greatest enemy is ourselves. Yes. And I'm going to show you where the devil is. The devil is not coming in here with, with two horns, but the devil is you. Uh oh. I lost him. <laughs> what are you talking about? The devil is me. The devil is in you. Okay. See, we fight ourselves. Tell the truth, Pastor. Okay. He's a being, and we're going to learn it today. We're going to see that he's in you. Because we have this ability, it's called the hypostatic nature, to walk in all the way good 
are always evil. We have these two natures. We have something warring against us. Paul said it the best. I would do good, but evil is always present. Why was evil always present? Because he was always present. <laughs> and then he said, there's no good thing that is in my flesh. So again, that's a key indicator to let you know where the evil is. Yeah. He said, I would do good, but there's a war going on within my members. And it's always bringing me back to the law of sin. Then he started talking about who shall deliver me from the body of this day. I thank Yah. <laughs> Y'all hear it is. So Yah has provided deliverance for his people. And today that's what we're going to talk about. Deliverance. What is it and how to receive it? Paul, Apostle Saul, understood that there was something evil in him. Matter of fact, he said the message of Satan came to buffet me three times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I prayed to Yah, uh -huh. take this thorn out of my out of my flesh. It was a thorn in his flesh. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that something? Yeah. A thorn. There was something in his flesh that made him want to do wrong when his mind, and because of the law and understanding, told him to do it, do right, right. go the other way. Yeah. But there was something in him that had the upper hand. He got the can't help it. The other day that phone. Yeah. I just can't help myself. I just can't. I'm being drawn to do the wrong thing. Yeah. What is in my flesh that keeps making me do the wrong thing? I keep coming to the wrong conclusion. I keep saying the wrong thing. I keep acting the wrong way. I desire to be righteous. I desire to be holy. I desire to be set apart. But there is something that's in my flesh pulling me contrary to the will of God. I guess I ain't talking to nobody. Oh, all of y'all are walking with the most high. And doing everything to the letter, right? Even though the Bible says it's the letter that kills it, but it's the spirit that makes it the lie. Yes. That's what we're talking about. Yes. The Bible says that the flesh profited nothing, but the spirit is the thing that's going to cause this thing to happen and cause this thing to really operate Stir the way it's supposed to. And we have to know and understand and sort of draw our minds in to what he's saying. Yes. Because there is a bomb in Gilead. Yes, there is. And there is healing here. Yes. There's healing in this house. Yes, it is. And there's deliverance in this house. Yes, it is. If you open up to understanding what it is that's got you by. Yes. See, the Bible says that the truth will do what? Set you free. Come on, talk to me here. The truth is going to do what? Set you free. Let me just hear this out. The truth is going to do what? Set you free. They sound pretty good. The truth is going to do what? Set you free. Let me hear y'all again. The truth is going to do what? Set you free. Truth is going to set you free. Yeah. So what got you bound then? It must be the lie. Yeah. It must be the lie that had you bound. Yes. And because you don't want to really walk in the truth, mm. Because some people understand the truth, but they just ain't going to walk in it. I meet preachers and teachers all the time. Yeah, I know what you're saying is right, Pastor. But man, that's going to cost too much, brother. And I'm not willing to give up all of that. Yeah, I know you're telling the truth. But man, I don't want to go through all of that. So they make compromises and make the... Well, hey, what if I had a service on the Shabbat? And had a Sunday morning service. I do Shabbat for those that can do the Shabbat. And I keep my Sunday morning service. Sunrise service. Yeah. Come on, I have to do the same thing you're doing, right? No. no. Right? Can I do a seventh day rest and then a first day rest too? No. I mean, you can worship the Father every day anyway, right? Yeah. That's what they tell you. Because they'll make the Sabbath day be about worshiping the Father. Yeah. 
But the Sabbath ain't got nothing to do with worshiping the Father. The Sabbath has everything to do with rest and obedience. Y'all hear that? Yes. yes, you can worship the Father every day. But you don't know what you worship. The reason why you don't know what you worship is because worship is of the Hebrews, of the Yahudim, of the Jews, the book said. But we know who the true Jews are, don't we? Yeah. So everybody else, they're worshiping, but they don't know what they're worshiping. But if you want to go from that premise, yes, you can worship the Most High every day. Because worship means Avodah. It has to do with working for Yah. So now, who do you work for? We're going to find out who you worship in a minute. Because they're going to tell you at 5 o'clock in the morning or even on the Shabbat, you got to show up. <laughs> And you're going to get up and go too. So that lets us know who you, because whoever you yield your members to obey, that's who you worship. That's who you serve. Ooh, hey. Yes, sir. Speak it fast. Are y'all hearing this? Yes. Whoever you yield your members and yield over to, that's who you truly worship. So today we're going to deal with deliverance. We're going to deal with it. We're going to understand it. What deliverance is. And, and we're gonna we're gonna move into it. Y'all hear that? Yes. All right, come on. We're gonna go through, we're gonna use the King James Version of the Bible. We're gonna understand what the King James Version. We're gonna use that Bible today. We're gonna go through the Hallelujah Scriptures a little bit so that we can really understand what the King James is saying. Come on. We're gonna go through the book of Jasher today. Come on. We're gonna go through the book of Jubilees today. Come on. We're going to go through the Apocrypha today. And if you don't have the Apocrypha, go back to that. If you don't have the Apocrypha, then you, you just got the middle part of the Bible just taken out. Because if you don't understand what the Apocrypha is talking about, then you ain't going to know how we got to how we are today. But we're going to go over history so you guys can know what this thing that's in your flesh that's causing you to miss you out. Come on. Okay. We're going to go through the book of Enoch today. All right, y'all got it? Y'all ready? All right, Matthew chapter 4. Come on. And Jesus went up. Uh, Turn him up, Jeremiah. Turn him up loud. I want everybody to hear it. Hold on, Brother Ty. Do a testing real quick. Test it, test it, test it. I got to say Come on. And Jesus. Yes, sir. And Jesus went about. Uh, don't, don't get it old because it turned up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching. Everybody say teaching. Teaching. So he went about all Galilee and he was teaching people. Yes. Okay? What was he teaching at? In their synagogue. He was teaching in their synagogue. In their synagogue. Notice it wasn't his synagogue. It was their synagogue. It's where the people was meeting at. Yeah. Come on. And preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Come on. And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So not only was he preaching, he was demonstrating the power of Yah. After he got through preaching it, then he started healing people. Right. Of some of their sicknesses. Oh. Of some of their diseases. Oh. So he was, after he got through preaching the word, then he demonstrated the power of Yah by healing everybody that was sick and healing everybody that was diseased. Y'all hear this? Yes. All right, come on. The Luke chapter 4, what did it say? The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. The Spirit, this is what Yahshua said. He said, the Spirit of Yah is upon me. Come on. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. The gospel, come on. To the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So he teach, first of all, he told he the spirit of God was on him, and he anointed him. You can't do anything without Yahweh's anointing. Somebody said we gotta have his anointing. Yeah, yeah, so he said the spirit is upon me because the spirit is the thing that brings about the anointing. Mm -hmm. It's not just oil being poured on you. You got to have the spirit of Yah on the inside of you in order for you to have the anointing. Y'all hear that? When David was anointed with oil, the Bible says the spirit of Yahweh came upon him and stayed with him. 
So it's the spirit of Yah that anoints. Y'all hear that? It's the spirit of Yah that anoints. It's not oil, natural Crisco, vegetable, uh, canola oil. That's not anointing because you get Crisco oil, you know, on your forehead. <laughs> or canola oil. Or coconut oil. Or olive oil. This is from Jerusalem itself. Olive oil. Olive oil from Jerusalem. None of that means you are anointed. Now, I know the word anointed means to be rubbed on, but you don't have to be rubbed on by the Spirit of Yah. His Spirit is going to have to be in you because the Spirit of Yah was upon me. He has anointed me. The Spirit of Yah. Y'all hear this? Yes. All right, come on. To preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. He said, at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptance, the acceptable year of the Lord. So he was anointed to preach deliverance. Ain't that something you have to be anointed to preach deliverance to people who are bound? Because people that are bound, sometimes they don't know that they're bound. That's true. So how do I preach deliverance to people that think they cool? Ain't nothing wrong with it. You know, it's hard to, you got to have some kind of anointing to show people you are jacked up. And I can see it a mile away. Because you're bound by all these devils and demons. And you don't know why you're acting the way you're acting. You don't understand. It's because you've been bound. Y'all hear that? So, to preach deliverance to the captives and to recovery the sight. See, a recovery. Yes. Which means these people were able to see at one point, but he had to have an anointing to recover what they couldn't see before. Y'all hearing it? And he says, to set at liberty them that are bruised. A lot of y'all been going through a whole lot of stuff, and you've been bruised. Bruised in your mind. Bruised in your spirit. Bruised in your emotions. Yes. Bruised all over. Yes. You've been bruised and don't know you've been bruised. Mm -hmm. And you keep trying to overcome the bruise, but you haven't let the bruise heal. Nobody has had the anointing to set at liberty those that have been bruised. Mm -hmm. Bruised by the church. Bruised by your parents. Bruised by your sister, your brother, your auntie, your cousin. Yes. You've been bruised. Right. But nobody told you or preached to you that, hey, there's healing for that bruise. Yes. <clears throat> Let me get you some freedom from that bruise. Y'all okay. hearing it? Yes. To preach the acceptable year of Yah. I'm going to tell you, this is the acceptable year in time for Yah. Hallelujah. 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 All right, come on. These are the components of Yeshua's ministry. One of the components is he taught. That's one of the components of his ministry. He went around teaching and preaching. Come on. Another component of his ministry is heal. He did heal all manner of sickness and disease. Another element to the components of his ministry was deliverance. So two thirds of his ministry he spent on deliverance. One third teaching, another third healing, but the two-thirds he spent on getting folks delivered, getting people delivered, yeah. getting people delivered. It's good to know that you're a Hebrew. It's good to know that you're an Israelite. It's good to know the history. It's good to know the Torah. But if you bruise, if you can't see, if you're blind, if you're still dealing with the things that you're dealing with, can't keep the Torah because you ain't been delivered or set free, what is he going to do? So he had to spend most of his time getting folks to deliver from the demons and devils that they allowed to come in their life to cause them to continue on operating in disobedience. So we hear a lot of messages that we the people of the book. We hear a whole lot of messages of people going through history saying that this we live. But nobody is spending time talking about deliverance because once you come to the realization that you've been deceived. Not only have you been deceived, you've been in transgression every since you were born and you came into this world. Yeah. 
But I grew up in Christianity. I grew I know the law. That's not I know the law. I know he laid his hand on me. Then you get those kind of religious spirits coming at you. Because you say, man, you still bow. No, no, see, if the Father led me from the Baptist church and he led me into this way, I must be all right. Because he brought me over here, he woke me up. Now I know I'm a Hebrew, I know I'm an Israelite. So I'm going to run in this way. Without seeking any deliverance, I don't think so. You're not going to do well. You're not going to fare well if you don't get deliverance. Because the Messiah spent two-thirds of his ministry getting folks delivered. See, we've been in a religion. A religion. Everybody say religion. religion. Because people think I be picking on Christians. But I'm not picking on Christians. I'm just saying the religion of Christianity yeah. has deceived us. Yes, it has. Even though they're reading out of our book. They're reading out of the scriptures. They're, they're reading out of, 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 of our book. Even though they're reading out of our book, they still, they still have deceived us because they're reading it from the lens of a religion that is against the people that's in this book. Right, yes. They said that their laws and their statutes and judgments have been done away with. Yep. Not true. Y'all hear that? Yes. So even though they're reading from this, <laughs> that this is this has been covered over by something else. Yeah. They're reading it, and they're saying, the children of Israel, they crossed the Red Sea. Come on and touch somebody and shout, I'm crossing over my sea. Right? Right. Yes. You know? I'm going to talk about Daniel and the lion's den. You can be in the lion's den yourself. But just like that Hebrew Daniel was in the lion's den, God is going to bring you out of your den. Right? right. right. Yeah, I mean, that, that's got something to <laughs> You know, they spend their time teaching. They're reading out of this say, and all they say is the children of Israel. Right. The children of Israel. They're reading the history, the heritage of Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. And it's sounding good to them, boy. Let me, let me tell y'all about Israel. Let me, let me tell you what the children of Israel did. Okay. See, the Bible tells us that all the nations, when you go to the Deuteronomy, yeah. it tells you all the nations would hear about this wisdom, yeah. would hear about what this Yahweh did for y'all, yeah. and they would marvel and say, what a great and mighty people who have all of this law, and even Yahweh himself, even in their mouth. Yeah. They have such great wisdom. This is some good wisdom that these people got. Mm -hmm. So what happened is, they're teaching our law, they're teaching our book, they're teaching our history to us. And they're not understanding that these are people that are here today. Right. These are people that are actually uh, here today. Oh, I'll take you. I ain't even know. I know. I know. It's all good. Y'all hear me now? Yeah. All right. So. What I want y'all to understand, what I want y'all to know, and what I want y'all to get, these are Hebrew, Hebraic scriptures yes. that are being taught to us, but people that don't have a Hebraic mindset is interpreting them. And they're interpreting them on their, or to their, you know, perspective and their understanding. Come on, John. Psalms 37, 38, 4. You're about to hear about Hebrews and the Hebrew scriptures. What it say? But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. Does, does, does that sound good? No. no. It's letting you know that the transgressors shall be destroyed together. Mm. And the end of the wicked shall be cut off. So that means the wicked <coughs> at some point in some place is going to be cut off. Well. All right. Come on. What it say? But the salvation of the righteous of is of the Lord. But the salvation of the righteous, the salvation yes. of the righteous, is of Yah. Come on. 
He is their strength in the time of trouble. Come on. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall Look at that. Yahweh is going to help them and Yahweh is going to deliver them. Yeah. Everybody shout deliverance. Deliverance. He they want to be delivered from the wicked. How many people are looking to be delivered from the wicked? Now, when y'all raise y'all hand, and I just said that, when I just said being delivered from the wicked, what do you have in mind? Okay, what do you have in mind? Okay, what do you have in mind? The world itself. What do you have in mind? The world? The nation. What do you have in mind? None of that. What about you? Me? Yeah. Oh, uh, deliver, deliver from um, the evil spirits inside me. There you go. We all got everything in mind when we did when we you know, hear the word deliver them. He's going to deliver them from the wicked, but nobody identifies the wicked being them. Mm -hmm. You always think somebody else. Yes. Oh, okay. That's why I know it's me. <laughs> Yeah, she said, I know it's me. It's me. I'm the one. See, because evil is perpetuated just by anybody or it's perpetuated by a person, right? Evil just don't come out of, out of what we would call nowhere. There's evil in you that make you do evil things. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what's making you do evil. We got, that's the whole mess. That's what we're going to deal with. But I wanted to just show a light on that understanding. So that, because when you say he's going to deliver you from the wicked, nobody ever identifies themselves as being wicked. And that's why I started off the message talking about the evil in you. <laughs> that's what Paul said. He identified the wicked being in him. Y'all hear this? So he's going to deliver them from the wicked. And what else is he going to do to them? Come on. And save them because they trust in him. And save them because they trust in him. So not only is he going to deliver them from the wicked, but he's going to save them because they trust in him. So you got to be delivered and saved from yourself. All right, y'all follow that? Y'all got to keep that in mind. Okay. All right? Come on. Psalms 40 and 11, come on. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me. O Lord, let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. Okay, come on. For the liberal evils have com compassed me by. This is, this, is, this, is, this is David. This is David talking and letting you know there are innumerable evils. Yeah. Not only am I dealing with all the people around me that got demonic spirits in them, but I'm dealing with the evil that's in me too. Yeah, okay. Are y'all hearing this? Yes. So we know that there's innumerable evil, like the world, your job, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But nobody wants to identify the evil in themselves. So he said, there are innumerable evils have to pass me about them all. My iniquities. My iniquities. Yeah. Nick, my sin. Mm -hmm. My transgression. The things that I keep on doing myself. Come on. Have taken hold upon me. I know here. Have taken hold upon me. Come on. So that I am not able to look up. So that I am not able to even look up. Because all this evil that's happening and going on that's in my life. Come on. They are more than the hairs of my head. They are more than the hairs of my head. Yes, now count the hairs on your head. Let's see how much, how much evil that is. <laughs> well, the hairs he comes to. Yeah. <laughs> All right, come on. They're Therefore, my heart is failing me. Come on. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. Be pleased to deliver. Please deliver me. Please help me. Anybody ever said, help me, y'all? Help me. Yeah. Help me, y'all. Yeah. See, that's what no crying has to be. But if don't nobody stop and tell you you need help, you're going to keep going and acting like you, you don't need no help. Come on. Oh, y'all, make haste to help me. Oh, Lord, make 
make haste. Anybody ever said that? Mm -hmm. Make haste to help me. Yeah. But a lot of times we say make haste to help me because we were wronged by somebody else. And sometimes, even when we're wronged by somebody else, there was wrong that we did too. Yeah. Right. And we don't acknowledge the wrong that we did. Right. We just want the Father to help us to deliver us from them right. because they the wicked. Y'all hear this? Instead of looking at ourselves, saying, well, what did I do that was wicked? Yeah. Maybe in this situation I contributed yeah, to the wicked. A lot of times we cause the wickedness. Yeah. But we don't take, we don't look at it. We just look at what somebody else is doing to us. Right. We don't look at what we're doing to them. Because we're blind to ourselves. Y'all yeah. hear this? Yeah. But that's why we got to look at the word. Because the word is like a mirror. When you look into the Word, you're looking at yourself. And you're supposed to be transformed into the very image of what the Word is saying. Right. Remember David? The prophet came to him and said, this man did this, that, and the other, took this man's sheep and all that kind of stuff. And he was talking about painting the story like it was somebody else. And David got so angry and said, where is he at? I want to kill him right now. Where is he at? He said, well, you're the man, David. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to kill him then, did he? Right. <laughs> you all see what I'm saying? <laughs> He was blind to himself. The story was about him. Yeah. Yeah. These scriptures are about you. Right. The scriptures are about you. Right. And you have to read them. Man, this is talking to me as an Israel. This is talking to me. It's speaking to me. All right? Come on. The word uh, for salvation in the Hebrew is Teshua. H 8668. 8668. Teshua. <coughs> And the word Yeshua is salvation. It is the word deliverance. So salvation and deliverance is the same word. Either you're going to be usually by God through human agency, salvation in the spiritual sense. So when he talks about, you know, stand still, children of Israel, and see the salvation of Yah, he's talking about see his deliverance. See what he's getting ready to do to bring about deliverance. So salvation and deliverance are the same thing. Y'all get that? Yeah, yes. All right, come on. Israel has always had natural enemies as well as spiritual enemies. And Yeshua had, came to expose and deliver us from the spiritual enemies and from our natural enemies. We see, did, have we seen that Pharaoh and the army anymore? Maybe he said today you won't see them no more. Mm -hmm. Have we seen them anymore since then? No. no. Since they all got drowned in the Red Sea. Have you seen Pharaoh and them anymore? No. That particular Pharaoh no. and that particular army. No. Okay? So Yeshua, he came to expose and to deliver us from the spiritual enemies and from our natural enemies. Because Israel has both right. spiritual enemies and natural enemies. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on. Acts chapter 1 verse 6, what it say? When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Yah, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So here's all the disciples looking at the risen Messiah and saying, Now, now is the time that you're going to restore the kingdom of Israel. You're about to restore it. They asked him that question. Come on. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times nor the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. It ain't none of your business when he gonna do it. That's what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> none of your business because the Father has put that in his own time, own hands. Yeah. You don't even know when the kingdom is going and all that's going to happen. That's in the Father's uh, own time. Come on. But this one thing I want y'all to know is what? But ye shall receive power. But ye shall receive power. Come on. After. After. Come on. That the Holy Ghost is come upon you. After the Holy Spirit has come upon you, that's when you're going to receive power. You're not going to receive power before then. You're going to receive power after okay. the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Come on. And ye shall be witnesses unto Unto me both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea, and in Samaria and into the utmost parts of the earth. Are, are y'all hearing this? Yes. You're going to receive some power after the Holy Spirit comes, and you're going to be a witness. Yeah. 
He didn't say he was going to go out and convert people because they don't understand the Hebrew uh, definition of the word witness. And we're reading in Acts, we're reading the Greek. When you go look up witness in the, uh, uh, the New Covenant, the Renewed Covenant, witness means something else. When you go to the Hebrew for witness, it means something completely different. So you got to always go to the Hebrew understanding or the Hebrew definition. Okay? Come on. Remember the question the apostles asked them. What was the question? Come on. When they therefore will come, they asked them, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They wanted to know, was they about to get the kingdom restored back to them? Okay? Come on. They were looking for a physical restoration. But Yeshua was preparing them for a spiritual restoration. Now y'all know that I'm in, 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 in a, a relationship with the ones who left America in 1967 to go to Israel. Right. That was the physical coming out of Egypt. Right. The physical manifestation. But Yeshua was trying to get the disciples to see that there had to be a spiritual restoration first. Mm -hmm. Then the physical restoration could happen afterwards. Mm -hmm. Because in the new, in the, in the, uh, the old covenant, it says first, we understand that it was always natural first, mm -hmm. then spiritual. Mm -hmm. But on this side, when Yeshua came, it's a spiritual first, natural come after that. Amen. So I brought that up to say that the physical going to Israel, they went out and did it physically. But now the Father's bringing up, bringing the spiritual ones that are spiritual to be restored back. Y'all okay. hearing this? Yes. Come on. Israel at this time were ruled under the Roman uh, Roman rule. Zechariah 4 6, this is what it says. Listen. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of God unto Zerubbabel. 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 <laughs> you mean? Saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said Yah to a host. So, what this is letting you know and understand. Is that the Father said that it's not going to be done by might or with strength. This kingdom will be restored back to you. It's not going to be done by power, shooting and guns and bombs and tanks. But it's going to be done by my spirit, says Yah. Y'all hear that? It has to be done by the spirit of Yah. And that's why the Father is waking us up all over the place. Yeah. Waking us up. So that we can be restored spiritually. Mm -hmm. And then we can go and possess it physically. Mm -hmm. Be restored physically. Y'all hear that? Yes. And the time is now. Yeah. When you're restored spiritually, you as an individual can begin the restoring process. Because the Father's, he's doing it by his spirit. Yes. In you. Working in you. Yes. Now you're going to help to wake other folks up. But it's happening now. Y'all hear this? Yes. Some people don't need, and even in the book of um, uh, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah it talks about we ain't going to have to be taught know the Lord. Yes. He said we're all going to know him from the least all the way to the greatest. Yes. So what I'm trying to get you to see and understand is that this is a spiritual uh, restoration that's happening. Mm -hmm. People are being restored spiritually. The physical deliverance has already started taking place. They went and they they on the land already. Now the ones who are spiritual needs to be joined over there now. Y'all hear this? Yes. Come on. Especially if you say you got the spirit. Ephesians six and twelve. What does it say? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling and fighting against one another. Come on. But against principality. We're wrestling against prince. He, in other words, Yeshua was trying to show you who the enemy really is. Remember we talked about the ranks of angels? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So we talked about this. He said, you're wrestling against principalities. What else? Against power. Against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's who the fight is really against. But it's not going to, you're not going to fight against them physically. This is a spiritual war and a spiritual fight that's happening going on. Y'all hear that? Yeah. You're fighting against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Come on, what it say? Principality, the word principality means to be chief, to lead, to rule, the person or thing that commences, the first person or thing in a series, the leader, that by which anything begins to be, the origin, the active cause, come on, the extremity of a thing, of the corners of a cell, the first place, principal, rule, magistrates, of angels and demons. Y'all hear me this? Yes. So principality is something else. It's where things get started at, the origin of this thing. And it goes all the way back to angels and demons. Okay? Sin and transgression. Come on. Let's look at the nations for a moment. Because I, I, I told you, Israel always wanted to be or act like they wanted to be like everybody else. Right. But that wasn't all of Israel. That was the nations or the people of Israel that rose up. Remember? After Joshua and them had conquered the land and they started living by the Torah and they had their inheritances, there was another group of Israelites, their children, or their another, another generation rose up after them that did not know Yah. Right. Yeah. And that generation that did not know Yah and did not know what Yahweh had did for their forefathers was the ones that wanted to act and be like all the other nations around them. Yeah. So now we want to find out what the other nations got going on that made the that generation of Israelites start doing what they were doing. Come on. Isaiah 40 and 15. Behold the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of a balance. Behold he taketh up the isles in a very little thing. As a very little bit. Yeah, as a very little bit. In other words, he's, he's saying, behold. Behold means to look. Everybody say, look. Look. Look at the nations. There is a drop of a bucket that count as small dust of a dime. Behold, he taking up the eyes is a very little thing. Come on, let's go on and see. And the Apocrypha, him expound on what he was saying in the book of Isaiah about the nations. All right. Second Ezra chapter 6. Verse 56 to 59, what does it say? As for the other nations that have descended from Adam. So we need to know, this is the other people, or the other people who became nations, they all descended from Adam. This is what the book is about to speak about them. Come on. You have said that they are nothing. You have said that they are nothing. Come on. And that they are like spittle. That they are like spittle. Come on. And you have compared their abundance to a drop from a bucket. And you have compared their abundance as a drop from a bucket. In other words, all they were, all what they got, ain't nothing. Okay? Come on. And now, O oh Lord, these nations which are recruited to be as nothing, domineer at, uh, over us and devour us. These nations that you said wasn't nothing, that was spittle and all this, they dominating us yeah. and devouring us. Exactly. How could that be? Y'all hear where you going? Yeah. Come on, what is that? But we, but we are people. But now he's going back to say, we, but we being your people, come on. Whom you have called your firstborn, only begotten, zealous for you, and most dear, have been given unto their hands. Been given, you've been given into their hands. Come on. If the Lord. It's the Bob, yeah, Bob. If the world has indeed been created for us. If the world has indeed been created for us as Israelites, man. Come on. Why do we not possess our world as inheritance? How long will this be so? No, here that's a good question. He's like, man, if the world is created for us, we're your firstborn, we're your only begotten, we all of this. Why is it 
that the world that was made for us, our inheritance, why we ain't dominating and ruling our world? What's going on? All right, come on. Why did the Most High deliver Israel until these nations? Let's find out why the Father delivered Israel to all these other nations to dominate over them. Come on, Judges chapter 2, verse 10. Come on. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. So this is amazing to me, because this is the generation after Joshua. This is the generation after Joshua. This generation after Joshua, this generation rose up, and they didn't know Yah. How could that be? How could that be that a gener whole generation grew up not knowing Yah, totally detached from the works and the plans that Yah had did for them? How could that be? Same way it is when, when you see children sleep. When they go to sleep and serve, they can't know Yah, can they? You see, that, that's how a whole generation can grow up not knowing the Most High. Because the words that was passed down to them went on deaf ears. It was in one ear and out the other. Okay. And they didn't pass it on. The ones with the word went in one ear and out the other, they didn't pass it on to their children. Amen. So now you got a whole other generation that don't know nothing of what's going on or what's happening. They just know that they're heathens, they're in the world, and they see what the world is doing, seeing what everybody else is doing, and they want a piece of the action. Y'all hear that? Yeah. Come on. Why would y'all allow an entire generation not to know him? Come on. Of Israelites now. Judges 2 and 11, uh, 12, come on. Then the children of Israel did evil in, in the eyes of Yah. So because they didn't know the Father or know what he did for Israel, they began to do evil in the eyes of Yah. They didn't know Yah. They didn't know what he had done. So of course, they're going to start doing evil. They're going to start doing the wrong thing in the eyes of Yah. And what did they do? And serve the Mount Baals and forsake Yah of their fathers. Come on. Who had brought them out of the land of Israel and went after the other mighty ones. So, in other words, they forsook the Elohim, the mighty one of Israel, and they started serving other mighty ones <coughs> that the other nations that was around. They were influenced by the other nations. Yeah. And they started worshiping the same gods that they had set up. Because they didn't know Yah. They didn't know what he had done for Israel in the past. Come on. And we're going to have the other mighty ones of the people who were all around them. Y'all hear that? Come on. And they bowed down to them. And they, they, and they bowed down to their mighty ones. And they provoked Yah, right? Come on. So they forsook Yah and served Baal and the Ash, Ash, Asherites. They forsook Yah and they began to serve Baal and Asher. Y'all hearing this, right? Okay, come on. And what happened? And the displeasure of Yah burned. And the displeasure of Yah burned against Israel. Come on. Therefore he gave them unto the hands of plunderers who despoiled them. So he turned them over and gave that generation of Israelites who were wicked and servant, Baal and Ashtaroth, he plundered, gave them into the hands of the plunderers who despoiled them, who took away everything that they had, took it away from them because he gave them over to the hands of the ones who were worshiping all these, these idols and all that. Come on. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around. Now again, you'll say, well, why did he do that? Because he provoked them to wrath. And he told them in the time of Joshua that I'm not going to move away these other uh, nations of people. He said, I'm not going to move them away. I'm going to keep them around to see if you, you guys will actually keep Y'all was law, statutes, and judgment or not. Thank you. He said he's going to have these other nations stay around.
to see if they're going to be a testing ground to see if you're really going to keep the law, statutes, and judgments anyway. But we know if a whole generation don't know Yah and don't know, you know, what he did, that's exactly what they did, the opposite of what uh, keeping the law, statutes. They did the opposite of that. They started worshiping Baal and all this other stuff. Come on. And they were unable to stand before their enemies any longer. So it lets you know that when you don't know who the Father is and you don't know the works that he did in the past, it's easy for you to be just like them. Right. Y'all hearing it? Yes. He's showing you a holy, righteous nation can be given over to the hands of their enemies because they fail to teach and educate the generation ahead. Y'all hear that? Yes. So if we don't teach the generation that's coming up, guess what? The same thing that they were doing is the same thing that's going to happen to our children okay. if we don't get them and educate them right. and let them know about the Elo the mighty one yes. of Israel. Right. Y'all yeah. hear that? Yes. This is important. It is important. Because they got to know. They got to know. People got to know what's going on and what's happening. All right, come on. Let's go over here to Jubilees. Jubilees, 22 and 16. Come on, what it say? And do, thou, and do thou, my son Jacob, remember my words and observe the commandments of Abraham, thy father. Separate thyself from the nations and eat not with them. Wow. That's what the father said. Yeah. Separate yourself from the nations that are around you. This is how you know he's speaking to all of us in every generation and at every time. Yes. He's talking to Jacob so that to separate thyself from the nation. Well, Jacob was separated from the nations. Mm -hmm. So this is a word for everybody else coming on down the pike. Right. And he said, don't eat with them. Yeah. So what he says to what? He's saying to everybody. Yeah. And I'm hearing this. Yeah. Come on. And do and do not according to their works. And do not according to their works. Come on. And become not their associates. And become not their associates. Come on. For their works are unclean. This is why. Their works are unclean. Come on. And all their ways are pollution. All their ways are pollution. Come on. And an abomination and uncleanness. So can you talk more plainly than that? No, can't get no <laughs> He's letting you know. Exactly. He's letting you know these nations that are not Israel, they are unclean, polluted, abominations, and full of uncleanness. Mm. Come on. They offer their sacrifices to the dead and they worship evil spirits. Oh, now he's showing the light. He said they're offering their sacrifices to the dead and they worship evil spirits. And they don't even know they're doing it. Some of them know it. Most of them don't know it. Yeah. Come on. And they eat over their graves. They eat over the graves. Come on. And all their works are vain and nothingness. All their works are vanity and nothingness. Santa Claus is coming to town. Everybody getting ready for Santa, right? You better not pout. You better not whatever else is going on. Because he's coming to town. He's coming down a chimney near you. He even got the news line to the children. Oh, I saw Santa on the radar. Oh, look at him. Oh, look at him, children. Look at him. Ooh, he, he, he'll be there in a little while. He's coming for, down the chimney. Make sure y'all have some cookies for him, right? <laughs> see? Isn't it, you see how that works? I bet he nothing is. Do rabbits lay eggs? No. No, rabbits lay chocolate covered eggs. <laughs> How can an unclean rabbit lay chocolate colored eggs? <laughs> right? But he's talking, right? To people now. Like. You see? And their works are vanity and nothingness. So he let you know. Come on. They have no heart to understand. They ain't got no heart to understand. And you're wasting your time trying to tell them yeah. 
what this book say because they ain't got no heart to understand. Come on. And their eyes do not see what their works are. How do people know people like that? Yeah. Their eyes can't see what their works are being blind to themselves. Come on. And how they err in saying to a piece of wood, Thou art my God. They err in because they're looking at a piece of wood. They say, Thou art my God. Thou art my might. Come on. And to a stone, Thou art my Lord, and Thou art my deliverer. Are y'all hearing it? This is what they say to stones. You're my God and you're my deliverer. Yeah. Come on. And they have the heart. And, and, and the stone or the wood don't have no kind of mind. The heart is the mind. They don't have no mind in them at all. Can't speak to them, can't do, deliver nothing. But they don't see how that's an error. Don't hear this. Come on. The nations have no covenant with the Elohim or the Yahweh of Israel. Come on. Jubilees 22. This law. This law is for all the generations forever. And this law is just for some of the generations. Oh. It's for all the generations forever. Come on. And there is no circumcision of the days and no omission of one day out of the eight days, for it is an eternal ordinance ordained and, and written on the heavenly tablets. So it's these that you know this thing is in stone. His ways and his works are established. Okay, come on. And everyone that is born, the flesh of whose foreskin is not circumcised on the eighth day, Belongs not to the children of the covenant, which is the Lord made with Abraham, but to the children of destruction. So he let you know if they ain't circumcised on the eighth day, they belong to the children in the category of the children of destruction. I mean, ever heard the question where somebody asked you, are people premeditated or predestined to go to hell? Yeah. How would a loving God send all of these people? to the lake and wouldn't give them an opportunity to repent. When his word said, for God so loved the world that he died. Right? Are you hearing it? So he's letting you know that there are children in the category of destruction. And nothing is going to get them off of that path of destruction. That's a hard thing for us to understand and to grapple with in this modern time. Because we've been contextualized by Christianity, by the religion. That everybody. everybody's got a little good in it. Right? Come on, what's that? Just watch this. You'll go deeper. Nor is there moreover any sign on him that he is the Lord. So in other words, the ones that are not circumcised, there ain't no sign on them to say that he belongs to the Most High. Watch this. Here we go. But he is destined, but he is destined to be destroyed and slain from the earth. -wee. But he is destined. Destined. Predestination. Some are determined to be righteous and some are determined to be unrighteous. Some are determined to be the wheat and some are determined to be the tail. Somebody had to be a Judas. Yeah. I'm just glad it wasn't me. Y'all hear that? Somebody had to be Esau. Yeah. I'm just glad it wasn't me. Somebody had to be Satan. Yeah. I'm just glad it wasn't me. Are y'all hearing this? Yeah. And that's just black and that's straight. Yeah, that's it. It says these people are destined to be destroyed. And what else? And be rooted out of the earth, for he has broken the covenant of the Lord our God. So he's letting you know they're in. All right, come on. This is more about the nations in the book of Jubilees. You make y'all want to read the book of Jubilees out of What is it? Watch this. This is good. Hmm. Jubilees chapter 15. Verse 29 to 33, what's that? For the, for, the, for the command is ordained for a covenant. For the command is ordained for a covenant, come on. That they should observe it 30 Ah, 30 is the first. They should observe it forever. I think long. that's a law. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> 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 now we got a big plan. 
that they should observe it. So the command is ordained for a covenant that you should observe it. That means do it. That don't mean observe it like this. <laughs> Just looking at it. Not mean actually do it. Okay? Watch this. For every among all the children of Israel. Forever. Oh, oh, yeah. Forever among all the children of Israel, for Ishmael and his sons and his brothers and Esau, the Lord did not cause him to approach him. Stop right there. He's letting you know. Ishmael and his sons uh -huh. and his brothers yeah. and Esau, Yah did not cause to approach him. He didn't allow them to come to him or come where he was. Right. Watch this. And he chose them not. And he chose them not. Everybody say not. not. Come on. Because they are the children of Abraham. Because they are the children of Abraham. Mm -hmm. He didn't choose them not. Because they were the children of Abraham. But what? Because he knew them. Because he knew them. He knew them. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear it? Is. Yes. Come on. But he chose Israel to be his people. But he chose Israel to be his people because he knew Israel. Mm -hmm. Come on. He sanctified it. And, and he sanctified. After he chose Israel, then he sanctified it. Come on. He gathered it from amongst all the children of men. Then he gathered it from all, from among all the children of men. Come on. For the, for there there for there are many nations. For there are many nations. Come on. And many people. And many people. Come on. And all are his. And all belong to the Most High. All are his. Yeah. So he let you know all the nations, all the people, they still belong to the Most High. They have their place. In the, in, the, in the world, on the planet, in the, you know, on earth. But watch this. And overall, have he placed spirits and authority to lead them astray from him? Woo-wee! Yeah. All these people in all these nations, he just said he placed spirits in authority to lead them away from him. So if we're following the nations, what are we going to be doing? We led away and led astray from the Most High God. That's why you can't follow the nations. Y'all hear it is. Come on. But over, but over Israel, he did not appoint any angel or spirit. But over Israel, he didn't appoint any angel or spirit, but he placed spirits over every nation. And the United States of America is a nation. Right. That he's placed the spirit on. Yeah. And they're not leading us to Yah. They're leading yeah. us away from Yah. Yeah. Yeah. If you follow that way. Right. Right. But over Israel, he did not appoint any angel or spirit. Why? For he for he alone is their ruler. Y'all y'all should be shouting right now. Yes. He alone is Israel's ruler. Yes. And watch this. And he will preserve them. And he will preserve there. Mm -hmm. Woo yeah. Come on. And require them at the hand of his angels and his spirit. And he's going to require every Israelite if an angel or spirit got him, then he's going to request it. Let him loose. Yeah. Turn him loose. Yeah. Turn him loose. Yes. Come on. And at, the, and at the hand of all of his powers in order that he may preserve them and bless them. How are people going to be preserved and blessed? Mm -hmm. He's pronouncing over you yes. what's going on and what's happening. Right. Come on. And that they may be his and he may be theirs from his forth evermore. The reason why he's doing it is so that you can be his. I am yours and you are mine. Yes. Forever. Yes. To be preserved. To be sanctified. Yeah. To be set apart forever. forever. Are y'all hearing this? Yes. Watch this. The ministry of deliverance. Everybody shout the ministry of deliverance. The ministry of deliverance. Because all of what I just said is key to understanding what the Father is doing. And when Yeshua came, I'm about to break this down where y'all will be like, my, y'all about to get a great understanding. Come on. Mark chapter 1, 23. That's right. Come on. What does it say? 
And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. So here we are in the synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. Come on. So this is what we have. A synagogue, a man, and an unclean spirit. What is a man doing in the synagogue with an unclean spirit anyway, Father? I know people that went to the synagogue, went to mosques, went to churches, were all righteous and holy and steadfast and prudent and doing. I thought that was going on in all the synagogues and churches and fellowships. Why is somebody there with an unclean spirit? Y'all hear this? Yes. And the an unclean spirit was doing what? Crying out. Crying out. Yeah. Crying out. Yeah. Come on. The word cry out means to call out, to call for help. He was crying out, to make an outcry, to clamor, to be summoned, to call together. How do people know in many churches all over this land, there's people calling out and crying out yeah. for help and deliverance, but nobody is answering their cry. And guess what? He was in the synagogue with an unclean spirit that was crying out. Come on. And he was crying out, let us alone. Leave us alone. Let us alone. Plural means more than one unclean spirit that was there. Let us alone. All right. <laughs> Let us alone. Come on. Let us be. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? <coughs> what, what do we, we ain't got nothing to do with, we don't want to have nothing. What, do, what is our business with you? These spirits in this man was crying out when they saw the Messiah. They said, what, what do we have to do with you? Leave us alone. Leave us alone. I wonder if y'all heard children say that before. Yeah, leave it alone. Yeah. I wonder why they're saying that thing. Because I'm a spirit. Y'all are hearing this. Come on. Prophecy. Art thou come to destroy us? So the unclean spirit no. in that man no. was saying, you hit too early. Is our time up? Because they were given the time to do stuff on the earth. And when they saw the Messiah, they said, leave us alone with you. Are you coming to destroy us before our time? Come on. First John 3 and 8, what does it say? He that's coming to sin, coming to commit sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Y'all hear that? This is why he was manifested, so he can destroy the works of the devil. And when they saw him, they said, Leave us alone! Let us alone! Have you come to destroy us? Come on. Matthew chapter 8, verse 29. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Remember, Satan got kicked out of heaven? Yes. His angels, because yes. Michael and them was warned, right. and Satan and his angels was warned, mm -hmm. and he said, He has come down. He said, Rejoice, O heavens, because Satan ain't no longer in him. But he said, Woe unto the earth. Remember that? For Satan has come down to you with great wrath yeah. because he knows he has a lot of time left. Uh, and he has a short time. Right. So these spirits, when they saw Yeshua Hashim, they said, Are thou come hither to torment us before our time is up? Yeah. We thought we still, is now the time? <laughs> that's, how he, that's how you know. He used Israel for times and seasons. Mm -hmm. When they saw him, they said, Time must be up. <laughs> he was coming to torment us. I know we still got a little bit more time to keep doing what we're doing. Y'all hear this? Yes. This is so important. Come on. The book of Enoch is going to give us some understanding of what these spirits was talking about when they were talking to the Messiah like this. Enoch. What chapter is that? 
You know what I'm saying? Okay. It probably said it again. Oh, chapter 16. Chapter 16, verse 1 in the book of Enoch. It says, the destruction of the death of the giants, and there should be no shalom. So come on, read 16 and 1. What does it say? Listen to this. From the days of the slaughter and destruction, and the death of the giants, and the spiritual beings of the spirit, and the flesh, from which they have proceeded forth, which will corrupt without incurring judgment, they will corrupt until the day of the great conclusion, until the great age is consummated, until everything is concluded upon the watchers and the wicked ones. Now, to understand that, you have to turn to Genesis chapter 6. And in Genesis chapter 6, it's talking about the sons of Yah came down and joined with the daughters of men. And in that particular time, these watchers, these heavenly beings, came and saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they joined together with them, and they had children. And the children that they created were giants in that day and in that particular time. And we know that there was a flood that happened, and the flood was supposed to kill or wipe out all of creation, even the giants that the spiritual ones made with the daughters of men. And when those giants died physically, their spirits didn't die. Right. Their spirits came out of those bodies, though. Okay? And it's telling you here that the death of the giants and the spiritual beings of the spirits and the flesh, which from which they have proceeded forth. So they came from these, right. these, these, these angelic beings. Uh -huh. It says will corrupt without incurring judgment. In other words, they're going to keep doing wicked without incurring judgment right away. Right. So they're going to keep on having an opportunity to do as much wickedness as they can without incurring judgment. Uh, they will corrupt until the day of the great conclusion. Right. So when they saw Yeshua, they thought, it is the day of the great conclusion. Okay. Or you just come to mess with us before our time is up. Y'all follow me? Yes. Until the great age is consummated. Mm -hmm. Until everything is concluded upon the watchers. These are the angels of all of us that the book of Enoch uses. And the wicked ones. Right. So, again, they saw Jesus and said what? Let us alone. Have you come to talk? What are you doing? What are we to do with you right now? We still got some time to go before this great time of growth. We both to keep on doing wickedly without incurring judgment. Mm. Ain't that something? Yeah. Because that's their nature. Their nature is to do wicked. Yeah. And they're going to keep doing wicked. That's why the Bible says, can a good tree bear bad fruit? Right. Can a bad fruit produce what? Yeah. Good fruit. Mm -hmm. A bad tree cannot produce good that's fruit. Good. No matter how bad you want it to happen. Their nature is a certain way, and they're going to do wickedly. Okay? Come on. Matthew 8, 29. Let's read what they said again. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Can y'all understand what they were coming from now? Okay, I'm showing you something. All right, go ahead. Now we're going back to the book of Enoch, chapter 16, verse 2. Watch what it says. Come on. And so to the watchers on whose behalf you have been sent to intercede, who were formerly in heaven, say to them. Enoch was the, the, those watchers and those spirits that were in chains started trying to talk to Enoch. Say, Enoch, we want you to intercede on our behalf because they want to be forgiven. I wonder is that why all the songs and gospel music keep saying that he gonna forgive you, he gonna love you, he gonna do all this. Who are they really being inspired by? Okay? So they wanted Enoch to pray for them. So the Father said, this is the word you're gonna give to them uh, spirits that's trying to get you, these angels and these angelic beings. This is the word I want you to say to them, Enoch. Come on. You are you are once in heaven. You are once in heaven. But not all the mysteries of heaven were, are open to you. Not all the mysteries of heaven are open to you. Come on. 
And you only know the rejected mysteries. So they only knew the mysteries that had been rejected anyway. And those particular mysteries, they had been what? And those ones you had broadcast to the women in the hardness of your hearts. And by those mysteries, the women and men multiply evil deeds upon the earth. Tell them, therefore, you will, you will have no shalom. You will have no peace. He said, the things that y'all telling the women created, uh, you know, the things that, and we talked about that before too, the things that they taught the women how to create weapons of war, bracelets, and antimony, and all that. Remember we talked about all that? Yeah. He said, those are considered the rejected memory, the, reject, the rejected mysteries. He said, you have broadcast these and told these secrets to all of the women and men, and because you told them those mysteries, they continue to multiply evil deeds upon the earth. Tell them, Enoch, there ain't going to be no shalom, for there ain't going to be no peace. They're not going to be able to have no type of rest or peace whatsoever. Y'all follow this? Yes. Yeah. All right, come on. Mark chapter 1, 23, 24, 26, 28. What does it say? Watch this one. Because this is dealing with another instance with a man filled with demonic and unclean spirits. Come on. I know thee who thou art, the, old, the Holy One of God. And when the unclean spirit had torn him with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread among, abroad throughout all the region around, around about that. So again, here's a man, unclean spirits in him, and they were tearing him. And the voice of, the, uh, of Yeshua told him to come out of him. The people were all amazed when they saw it. And they said, what is this? Is this a kind of new doctrine? How is he going to command these things that's in this man to come out? Because they didn't understand what he was doing. He just with a loud voice said, come out. Yeah. Come out. And it didn't look like nothing was going on until they saw the man in his right mind. And they said, what kind of, what, what new doctrine is this? For with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits and they obey him? And immediately his fame went wrong. Come on, go to the next one. So unclean spirits, they know what Yahweh has declared for them. They know they don't have no shalom, right? They know who is the Holy One of Israel. Unclean spirits do. And they know if he is living in you or not. Three things unclean spirits know. They know what Yahweh has declared. You take your notes. They know who the Holy One of Israel is, the Redeemer, the Deliverer is, and they know if that Deliverer and Redeemer is dwelling in you. Y'all hearing it? Three things that unclean spirits know. They know what Yahweh has declared. They know who the Holy One of Israel is, and they know if He's truly living and abiding in you. Y'all hearing it? All right, come on. These are other accounts. Mark five and one. What happened? And they came, and they came over into the other side of the sea, unto the country of the Adarians. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately they, there met him out of the tombs a man with the unclean spirit. So here he is. I told you two thirds of Yeshua's ministry was 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 in deliverance. So as soon as he comes over to the ship, immediately there's somebody else there to meet him that had what? Unclean spirit. So he go from church, get on a ship, go to the other side of a place, and guess what is over there too? Unclean spirit. So it don't make a difference where you are in this world. Whether you get on a plane and go to London, whether you get on a plane to go to Israel, whether you get a plane to go to Africa, China, Zimbabwe, uh, go to uh, the Netherlands, Germany. We're always going to meet and know and understand that there's always going to be unclean spirits ready to meet anybody that got the Holy One of Israel living on the inside of them. Know that. Y'all hear that? Yes. So when you leave out of this place and you go some, go back home or go 
to your job uh, on, on, on first day or whatever you're going to do, know that there's going to be unclean spirits in people waiting on you. That's why I said the Father is putting people in your path. Not putting people in your path for you to look over them. It's he putting them in your path so you can begin to discern if they have an ear to hear and a heart to see. Y'all hear this? Come on. Because that he had been offered, offered off the bound with feathers and chains. The chains had been plucked asunder by him. Now here was a man that had, was bound in chains. And the chains, he, uh, he, he broke them in pieces. Yeah. Now what kind of script is that? <laughs> is that what you would consider normal? Neither could any man tame him, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stone. Now, does that sound like a normal person? No, no. He's hanging out in the mountains and he's cutting himself. Come on. But when he saw Jesus afar, when he off, saw Jesus afar off, what did he do? Okay. He ran and worshipped him. He ran. He ran and worshipped him. Come on. And cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? Woo! So he was crying out for some deliverance, though. Right. <laughs> or was those spirits in the crying out saying, Have you come to mess with us before our time? We got time to be in this man in the shape and the condition that they didn't want him to get any better. They wanted him to stay in that shape. And they said, What have we to do with you? We ain't bothering you. <clears throat> we bothering this man now. Right. Come on. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, the unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are men. Man full of devils, full of demons. And full of legions. Yeah. And said, My name is Legion, because there's a whole bunch of us in here. In that one man. In that one man. In that one man. All those devils and demons. Come on. So this is a consistent thing. Let us alone. And what have we to do with you, Jesus? Consistent thing when folks have unclean spirits in them. They either do not want to hear the word of truth that you are declaring. Man, leave me alone with all that. I don't want to hear all that. So you know already. Okay. I'm showing you how to detect the unclean spirit. That's Even in you, because sometimes you don't want to hear the truth. <laughs> I want to hear it right now. I, 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 want, I, want, I want to just watch whatever I'm watching on TV. Mm -hmm. Then I know, oh, that's unclean spirit. Right. Leave me alone. Leave, just leave. Will you stop talking to me? Will you leave me alone? Stop bothering me. Let me put my earphones in my ear. Something. Anything so I won't have to hear anything that's coming out of your mouth. Because you're bothering me. And you don't even know why you're being bothered. Right. Yeah. Have anybody ever felt like that? Yes. Why am I being, why am I, have you ever been woke up in the morning and just was bothered? Yes. But don't really know why you were bothered, but yes. you were just, just irritated. Right. Just, just irritated. Right. Probably irritated with your spouse right next to you. Just, his voice made you, or her voice made you. You're just irritated. Bob, y'all hear me down here? Just look straight here and back you. <laughs> and then you get up with that on you and you start doing your work. Not knowing that there's an unclean spirit there. And you don't even recognize it. And everybody get on your nerve. But you don't think you're getting on nobody else's nerve. And that's how, that's how the scene you become. Everybody else is bothering you, but I guess you ain't bothering nobody. Y'all don't see what's going on. You the only one that can complain and say all the stuff about everybody else. And that's how you know you got an unclean spirit. When you can name all the wrong things with everybody else, but never name the wrong thing that's wrong with you. Y'all hear that? See? 
Unclean spirit. Everybody say unclean spirit. Unclean spirit. See, y'all kind of checking and doing some self evaluation. I heard over there, Brooke. He said, man, that's how I am sometimes. <laughs> y'all hearing that? That's what you're supposed to The word is supposed to. You're supposed to start doing some self inventory on yourself. Hey, yeah, I, I do be like that sometimes. I don't even know what be wrong with me. Sometimes I get this thing on me. And before I know it, I'm frustrated. I want to yell. I want to scream. Or oh, I'm just going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this person. I'm just going to we gonna go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I ain't going to let them win. Come on. This verbal war we have. Here's Mark chapter 7, verse 25. Watch this. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. So even the wicked is able to tell when they children got devils and demons in them. And we already know that he said he placed the spirit over all the other nations to lead them away from them. So here's a Greek woman by nation coming to the Messiah and saying, can you please cast the devil out of my young daughter? Come on. So it doesn't make a difference whether you're young or old. <laughs> it don't make a difference. We look at our children and say, oh, my little baby. I know they got no unclean spirit. They just don't keep the big old cheeks. I know they ain't got no devil in them. But then we look at all the teenagers and say, yeah, devils are definitely in all the teenagers. <laughs> Ooh, they got some devils. Them teenagers, woo, wait. But then we bypass the toddlers because they're so precious. We don't think my clean spirits can be in them. But I'm going to tell you, young or old, teenager or adult or senior citizen, <laughs> don't make a difference. That covered everybody, did it? Man, female, <laughs> black or white, how's that? Or olive color. Y'all want to see that? <laughs> <laughs> it don't make a difference. Devils and demons live in people. Yes. And you ain't exempt either. Yes, Pastor. Y'all hear that? Did uh, <laughs> I tell them what you said to me last week? No, I didn't say it. <laughs> Come on. Luke chapter 13, verse 11. Come on, what does it say? Okay. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. Why does this didn't say infirmity? Because it was a spirit. Because it's had to let you know, identify why she had this infirmity. It was a spirit of infirmity. And I'm not trying to say this if y'all be all spooky. Ooh, spirit. See, because when you start saying something you can't see, a spirit, the first thing you do, you start looking around. Look at the corner. <laughs> and all you gotta do is look right there at you. At right in the mirror. At this woman had a spirit of infirmity that was in her. How long did she have it? 18 years. 18 years with a spirit of infirmity. Wow, that's a long time. Not infirmity in and of itself, but it was a spirit that was causing it. Come on. And it was bound together and could and could it could it in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Yeah. So I said, Hallelujah, thank y'all for the deliverance, right? I didn't think she, she, she was appreciative for that. Yes, she oh, yes. Yes. She couldn't lift, her, lift herself up because she made this infirmity in her. And he said, Woman, thou art loose of your infirmity. So, in other words, the Spirit was holding her, making her not be loose. And when Yeshua said, be loose. Spirit had to let it go. Couldn't hold it no more. Come on. He gave his disciples the same kind of power to do the same type of thing because he knew that that's what they were going to need trying to restore the kingdom of Yah. The people have to have a spiritual breakthrough. Yes. I went to Israel and I saw the conditions of some of the people. And I clearly told one of the, uh, the uh, elders there that, man, y'all need deliverance. Wow. And you know what they said? I think you're right. <laughs> I think you hit something on the head when you just.
just said that. But I know everybody ain't gonna, I know everybody ain't gonna receive it. It has to be done on a one-on-one -on -one basis. He said, everyone that's thirsty, come. Those that are weird.